Sometimes there are two restrictions on a quantity, and either one of them can be true. It doesn't matter which. For example, suppose a movie theater has discounted tickets for children under 12 and seniors 55 and older. Then if A represents a person's age, someone can use a discounted ticket if A is less than 12, under 12, or A is greater than or equal to 55, 55 and older. In this case, we got another compound inequality, but the word was not and, it was or. Now, and meant exactly what it means in English, but or can mean two different things in English. In math, or always means one thing. It always means one or the other or both. It's what's called an inclusive or. This is a use of the word or that we see in English sometimes. For example, in order to see an R-rated movie, you must be over 16 or accompanied by a parent. If you're 30 and you go to an R-rated movie with your mom, you're still going to be let in. right? They're not going to say, oh, I'm sorry, it's or accompanied by a parent. No. This is an inclusive or. This is the kind of or that we mean when we write an or in a compound inequality. It's an inclusive or. If we meet both requirements, that's still okay. Let's say we wanted to graph a is less than 12 or a is greater than or equal to 55 on a number line. Now I'm going to draw a simple number line that shows only the numbers 12 and 55. Because again, we're not real interested in the numbers in between. I'm going to graph a is less than 12 and then separately graph a is greater than or equal to 55. And for the OR inequality, I want to find all of the points that are on one or another of the arrows. And it looks like they're just the ones to the left of 12 and to the right of 55. So there's my answer. There's my graph for A is less than 12 or A is greater than or equal to 55. Notice I've marked everything except for this gap in between. There are other things that can happen with an OR inequality. Maybe we have A is greater than 7 or A is greater than or equal to negative 2. Again, I'll graph each inequality separately. Here's A is greater than 7. Here's A is greater than or equal to negative 2. And now we want all of the points that are on one or the other or both. It looks like that just means, oh, that A is greater than 7 isn't giving us anything extra, right? Everything that's greater than 7 is automatically greater than or equal to negative 2 anyway. So we have this compound inequality just means a is greater than or equal to negative 2. The a is greater than 7 part isn't allowing any extra points in. There's one other thing that can happen with or inequalities. Let's say we have the compound inequality y is less than 5 or y is greater than negative 12. Again, I want to graph each inequality separately. y is less than 5 looks like this. y is greater than negative 12 looks like this. 
What are all the points that are on one or the other or both? That looks like all of the points are on one or the other or both. In fact, in this case, all numbers are solutions. Right? Every number is at least one of less than 5 or greater than negative 12. Some numbers are both, but every number meets at least one of those qualifications. Just like with AND then, there are four basic possibilities with OR. Just like with AND then, there are four basic possibilities with OR. In this possibility, right, the arrows go off in different directions with a gap between them. We need both inequalities. In these two possibilities, we only need the less restrictive inequality. And in this possibility, every number is on one or the other of our arrows, right? So in this possibility, all numbers are solutions.